Hello everyone, welcome to my Game and Web Design Open House Preview. My name is Mr. Truss, or Anthony Truss. I teach at Connor High School here in West Hartford. And uh, like I said, this is an Open House Preview for Game and Web Design. So um, I know that we're going to be meeting together remotely, face-to-face, uh, -face. so this video is designed to kind of show you what my class is about and what we're going to be doing um, because when we meet we're not going to have as much time. So hopefully you're watching this video before we've met. Um, so that you kind of get a better idea because I won't have the time to kind of show you the things I'm showing you in this video when we meet during our open house scheduled time. You're going to receive a separate email I believe from the district that gives you a link at the and a time of when you click and then we can meet face to face. Um, it won't be through like a Google Classroom type of environment. So moving forward though, this is my Google Classroom. Um, I like to encourage students to focus directly on the classwork tab. Everybody is enrolled in this at this point. If you're interested in becoming a parental observer, um, you can ask your son or daughter to log into Google Classroom and then just click add yourself as the parent contact under the people tab. Um, I'm not going to click on it now because I'll be able to reveal everybody's emails. So at this time, um, also if, if that's a difficult task for you, just send me an email and, and I'll put your email in automatically. So if you want to receive notifications and, and access to the Google, Google Classroom to see what your son or daughter is doing, just let me know and I can take care of that. But like I said, I've been encouraging students to focus on classwork because I keep my course organized chronologically by week block. Um, so the first week I focused on HTML basics and keyboard shortcuts that we'll be using for the year. Um, week two, we were on H HTML elements, um, which was a longer work worksheet and lab. And then week three, we focused on principles of design, um, as well as they worked on their first open-ended website project that um, was outside of a lab environment, which I'll, I'll allude to in a little while. This week, they're on their second uh, website project. They're, they're making their second website at this point. It's not a very large website, but it's a functional website by its definition. Um, as well as they're doing an HTML attributes lab and worksheet. So um, traditionally what I like to do, and I have a kind of a digital textbook that I traditionally use, and this is done across town as well, is we focus with W3 schools because it's certified, um, it's up to date, and it kind of shows the most recent modifications to the language. Um, they focus on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, which is the three that we'll be using this year when it comes to websites. Um, but they also have SQL or MySQL, PHP, Python, Bootstrap, all the way through Java, C++, and so forth. So if you're looking for an easy way to learn a variety of languages, W3Schools has this, and it's free. So, um, for example, HTML Basics. That was the first thing that we focused on this year. So I have worksheets and literature that go along with these lessons and things that embed this website into various activities. So a student will be initially... Um, introduced to what the HTML language is about. We'll talk about what this code does, um, and then they'll be able to try it themselves live on the, their browser without having to open up a, a text editor and so forth. Um, so if they add some content here on the left, like I just changed the word first to test, um, after they make some changes they can click run and it will run the actual code and render it over here on the right. Um, which is really helpful because students can kind of experiment with various things um, in a very risk-free environment and just to kind of see what specifically um, these tags do. So I have them explore, for example, the different classes of the, uh, the heading tag that I'm changing in right now. Um, they'll go in through a series of activities, like I said, and discussions throughout in the beginning of the class and then they're going to explore the content like I'm doing right now, running it to get a better understanding of the content. They'll grab a print screen um, of whatever it is that they're working on. They'll capture it just like I have here. Um, they'll copy and paste it into a Google Doc, turn it in, and then possibly answer some questions. So this is the live editor. Um, there are different sections for different activities all throughout the entire HTML language. We are not going to be covering the entire language, but students will understand the syntax and they'll be able to use the language. Just like you probably don't know every word in any specific spoken language, but you can use a dictionary and figure out how to use that noun, that preposition, um, or so forth. And so they're going to learn how to use the syntax and then they'll be able to look things up if they need to moving down the road. 
So we focus on the HTML language as the basics. Um, eventually we get into CSS as a style language, things that can drive menus and so forth. Um, this is what some of the code looks like in the aspect of CSS. And with rule sets and definitions that t are tied to tags, as you can see there's a rule set that's here. And that's got a P on it. And it will affect anything that's the paragraph element that's down here below. Um, if I wanted to change this to 40, any paragraphs that would be down below would then obviously have that 40 point font applied to those paragraph tags. So understanding those relationships um, is really important. We do scale up to something like a code editor that you see here up on the screen. This is a really, really simple website. This is their first web page of their website. And they learn about the doc type declaration, paired elements, nested content within. Um, so for example, like this one doesn't have the head yet, so students would have had to add the head tag, knowing that the title tag is actually, the title element is nested within. Um, all those things are really helpful to for students to actually do so that they can see this stuff when they're making their own projects. Um, the nice part about a text editor like this is you can kind of click on things and you can see the paired tags and you can quickly debug. Um, and then in terms of language, this text editor can obviously handle a variety of languages. We do get into Dreamweaver as well, Adobe Dreamweaver, which is more of a professional level. Um, right now it's a little bit too much to take in, so we focus on something smaller and lighter. Students work on file management and where files need to go and folder structure, which is really important for web design. And we also focus on like elements of design, like what are what is considered a good design and why. Um, here's an example of like a website that we could review, about 33 best websites to inspire you um, and what year they came from. And we can kind of review um, the various components of that website. Why is it considered a good design or a bad design? And then how was it made? Um, with that being said, there are activities and assignments within a, the Google Classroom that can specifically allude to that. So one, one thing is we watched a video about three principles of design and then we did a Padlet activity where everyone had to contribute to the takeaways as you can see here. These are all the takeaways from that specific lesson. So um, it was a collaborative type of approach and then we would review it. Um, we get into game design of course second semester. However, I infuse game design throughout the year starting right away. So I've already been talking about game design with students and what games are all about. Um, one of the main engines that you see here on the screen is called Construct 3. It's a two-dimensional platformer type of game engine. Um, it's a web-based one. It is licensed. Your son or daughter will receive a one-year license for free. Um, and they can do this stuff at home as well. This is not something that is installed in the lab. Um, it's event sheet driven, so it's programmically driven. Um, this is what the program looks like. And then obviously it can make pretty much any two-dimensional game that you can think of, as long as there's enough effort behind it. There's a sprite editor for artwork and animations, um, and it's a, it's a fairly robust engine. I'm very impressed with it. We also get into some physical card games, some board games, understand what games are in general. It doesn't have to be video or physical. Like what is it about games that make us want to play it? So we, we focus a little bit on game psychology. Students get a chance to play games with each other and understand the various different types of games that they may have not played before. Students will share different games that they've brought in from, from their experience and so forth. So it's just an overall really fun year. Um, of creativity, storyboarding, coming up with stories, making video games, communicating websites, um, and so forth. And obviously there's a little bit of a career focus on this and explaining to students how they can make money with these types of skills, what types of jobs there are out there, and um, what they can expect to make in terms of if they were to go down this career. I wish I had more time to speak with you. I already have gone over. I am about nine minutes in, so I apologize. If you have any questions, of course, you can email me, but I will say hello to you during our open house meet, although it will be short. So emails and things like that would probably be best for detailed questions. Have a wonderful night, and I will see you um, when we meet. Have a great day.